gospel lectionary reading today puts us at the beginning of what are called the farewell discourses of Jesus. From John chapter 13 through 17, we get some of the longest, most consecutive and heartfelt words of Jesus as he is preparing within his own self to leave his disciples to celebrate what we just celebrated a few weeks ago, Holy Week, where he suffers, dies, descends to the depths, and what we celebrate in this season, his rising from the dead, his resurrection, and what we will celebrate soon, the ascension of Jesus to Abba God. Just before the words we're about to read, Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. He has celebrated the Passover meal with them. He has named Judas as the one who would betray him. He has told the disciples that it won't be much longer that he will be able to be with them. He's told Peter in particular, which did not make Peter happy, surprise, surprise, that where Jesus is going, Peter cannot come. And Jesus himself is troubled in his own spirit, and the disciples are likewise are troubled, anxious, and confused about what all of this means. So just a little context as we turn our attention to these words. And I'm reading this morning from the Inclusive Bible Translation. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith in me as well. If you love me and obey the command I give you, I will ask the one who sent me to give you another paraclete, another helper to be with you always, the spirit of truth with whom the world cannot accept since the world neither sees her nor recognizes her, but you can recognize the spirit because she remains with you and will be within you. I will not leave you orphaned. I will come back to you. A little while now and the world will see me no more, but you'll see me because as I live and you will live as well. On that day you'll know that I am in God and you are in me and I am in you. Those who obey the commands are the ones who who love me and those who love me will be loved by Abba God. I too will love them and will reveal myself to them. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God indeed. As I already mentioned, Jesus is leaving. He's He's preparing himself and the disciples for his physical departure and they are troubled. Confused, anxious, angry, grieving, perhaps saying to themselves, this isn't what I signed up for. And amidst the whirlwind of feelings and emotions that Jesus perhaps has in himself and those who are following and close to him, he's seeking to encourage them. And he says, I'm leaving to go be with Abba God, but I will send you another who will be with you and within you always. An advocate. And in the Greek, that word paraclete, which literally translated means a come alongsider. Someone to be with you always. The spirit of truth, the what we now call in the modern day of the church, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. The same divine entity that hovered over the chaos of the waters at the beginning of time existed then and will be with you and within you all. The same, the same one who rested upon Jesus at his baptism like a dove will be with you and within you always. The same one who Jesus said is like the wind, which we can see and hear but do not know where it comes from, will be with you and within you always. 
the same one who we must be born again from, to see and hear and know, perceive and perceive her activity in the world will be with you and within always. always. The same one who gives gifts as we just celebrated to every one of us will be with you and within you always. The same one who slowly over time grows beautiful fruit in our lives will be with you and within you always. I am Jesus, and if I do not go, the Holy Spirit will not come. So I'm not leaving you orphaned and alone. I am sending you the Spirit, the mothering presence of God to be with you. She will advocate for you, teach you, comfort you, encourage you, love you, burn like a, a flame of love within you. And you will become the very dwelling place of God in which I will live in forever and ever fulfilling within you what you were always made to be, eternal human beings, fully alive, shining with glory in the world now and forever. Amen? I don't know about you, but sometimes I think, man, if I could have just walked with Jesus, if I could have just been with him, I think I would be a better human and a better Christian and maybe a better pastor. When I ponder this passage, I have to question my own question. This new gift to come to me is the indwelling presence of God as close to me as my very breath. Jesus says, if this new gift is to come, I must go. I know this must, mean, must, met, must have meant confusion and loss and change and difficulty for the, the disciples at that time. But I must physically depart this earth in this bodily incarnated form of the divine to be reunited with Abba God. But when I go, remember this. I am in God, you are in me, and I am in you. Let me repeat that. Jesus says, I am in God, you are in me, and I am in you. Friends, this is the beautiful mystery and truth of our faith. This is our incarnational and Eucharistic theology that we'll celebrate in just a few moments that Jesus is trying to explain to, to his disciples and he's trying to explain to you and me. You see, Jesus, the Christ, becomes most spiritually present to us when he is physically absent. Henry Nouwen puts it this way, the deepest communion with Jesus is a communion that happens in his absence. When Jesus departs, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the wind and breath of life, the life force hovering over the waters of the world and our lives is with us and within us always. In Jesus' physical absence, she is sent and remains with us and is always with us, always within us, and connects us mystically to Jesus and to Abba God. The Spanish mystic John of the Cross says that the Holy Spirit is the bond of love between God and Jesus. And that relationship of love between Abba God and Jesus the Christ is shared with each and every and indwells each and every one of us. Again, I am in God, says Jesus. You are in me and each and every one of us. Again, I am in God, says Abba God and Jesus the Christ by the bond of love who is the Spirit and nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, Abba God, and Jesus, because the bond of love, the Spirit, is within each and every one of us. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Are you with me? This is not only true for each and every one of us individually as followers of Jesus, but it is our connection also to one another. We, the church, are eternally, spiritually connected and bonded together. I know that might be, might be disturbing to some of you. You're like, do you know my neighbor sitting next to me on the pew? See, if Jesus is in God, 
And I am in Jesus. And Jesus is in God. And you are in Jesus. We are in the same place. We are bonded together through the Holy Spirit, the flame of love. Christ has no body on earth now but ours. You individually and collectively us. Jesus, this is why Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. I have given you another helper to be with you always, the spirit of truth, and you can recognize the spirit because she remains with us and will be within us. I will not leave you all orphaned. I don't know what you face these days of your life, but perhaps you, like the disciples in those last days with Jesus, feel confused, troubled, anxious, alone, wondering, where are you, Jesus? I know I do at times. And we have a helper that is always with us, the spirit of truth that we can recognize because she is within us. We are not alone. We have everything we need. We at East Liberty Presbyterian Church have been standing at a precipice, a pivot point, a threshold, a start of a new chapter where we are being invited to think about doing and being church differently than perhaps any way we've ever known before. This is a season of invitation to seek and recognize and call upon the Spirit Helper who is with us and among us and draw upon her inner and collective truth and wisdom and love and guidance and encouragement and creativity and ever-abiding loving presence to envision this new chapter with one another. Amen? And thanks be to God, it was a beautiful picture, Pastor Patrice, to see these new elders and deacons saying, yes, I'm in. Lay your hands on me. I'm in. You see, Jesus says we can recognize the Spirit. And I ask you genuinely this morning, how do you recognize the Spirit in your own life? How do you notice when it's spirit moving you, spirit guiding you, spirit prompting you to say something, to be quiet, to act, to not act, to do something in your life? There is a piece of that phrase, you can recognize the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Spirit, that's very personal. The Spirit, I believe, moves in very individual, personal ways, in unique ways in each person's life. But I will say this, it takes practice. It takes time, it takes community, it takes listening and discerning together, and it takes slowness, stillness, and patience. Last weekend I had the privilege of being on retreat with 15 people from this church. And over the 48 hours that we spent together, I watched the Holy Spirit speak, move, nudge, invite, heal, encourage, guide, and on and on and on. And I'm convinced that each one of us, myself included, were able to recognize the Spirit with us and within us because we slowed down, quieted ourselves, and listened. There was no place to go, no to-do items on our list. Our only invitation was to be still and know that God was God in community with one another and to pay attention to the movements and invitations of the Spirit in our individual lives and our collective life as a church. I know not every one of us can take 48 hours of our day to be quiet, to be still in community with one another, but can you take 10 minutes each day? 
Can you practice a Sabbath each week where you say no to work, you turn off those beloved cell phones and just listen and rest in creation with God and with God's community? If we are to recognize the Spirit with, it, with us and within us, we must create the conditions to avail ourselves to these Spirit movements. Because here's the beauty of the Spirit. The Spirit will not force herself on us. She is present with us and within us, but she is not pushy. She is gentle and kind and patient and loving and will wait for us to settle down and to slow down. The Holy Spirit is like the sun, always shining, always sharing her rays of light and her warmth and her energy with everyone who comes in contact. There may be clouds and mist and fog and pollution and gloom obscuring the brilliant rays of the light of the Spirit that she's always shining down, but it's regardless of the weather of our lives, the Spirit is still shining. We cannot escape the loving rays of the Spirit's light and energy. So the question for us is whether we want to open to the warmth and the energy of the Holy Spirit. Do we want to receive her energy and harness that renewing energy for our lives and the life of the church? For while we cannot block the brilliant rays of the Holy Spirit life, we can either consent to her movement or resist her movement. We can block it or we can permit it. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in his letter to the church in Ephesus. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? I'm glad you asked. I don't know for sure, but the admonitions around this tiny little command, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, all have to do with how we treat one another. Paul says this, Again, baked in this is the phrase, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is good for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Put away from all of you bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ has forgiven you. To me, it seems like we grieve the Holy Spirit when either in word or in our heart, we say to another human being, I don't believe the Holy Spirit's in you. Friends, as we stand at this threshold as a church community, let us not grieve the Holy Spirit. Rather, let us open and consent to her leading in the season of our life as a church. Let us recognize the beauty and the gift of the Holy Spirit with us and within us and with you and within you. Let us recognize the beauty and the gifts of the Holy Spirit in our ordained leaders and in the rest of our congregation so that together we may be the body of Christ, knowing we are connected to God and connected to one another and build up the body of Christ right here, right now, in this season of our life together. Let us allow the Spirit to ignite in each of us and the collective us all the goodness and gifts that are in us and seize this season, seize this transition, seize the unknowing and join in the dance of God, co-creating the future with Abba God, Jesus the Christ, and our spirit helper. Friends, if you love this three-in-one God, as I do, that is with you and within you, express that love, as Jesus says, by obeying the commands, which are very simple. Love God and love one another as God has loved you. In the name of that love, the love of Abba God, Jesus the Christ, and the Spirit Helper. Amen.